The oxidation state, sometimes referred to as oxidation number, describes degree of oxidation loss of, electrons of an atom in a chemical compound. Conceptually, the oxidation state, which may be positive, negative or zero, is the hypothetical charge that an atom would have if all bonds to atoms of different elements were 100% ionic, with no covalent component. This is never exactly true for real bonds. The term oxidation was first used by Antoine Lavoisier to signify reaction of a substance with oxygen. Much later, it was realized that the substance, upon being oxidized, loses electrons, and the meaning was extended to include other reactions in which electrons are lost, regardless of whether oxygen was involved. Oxidation states are typically represented by integers which may be positive, zero, or negative. In some cases, the average oxidation state of an element is a fraction, such as eight-thirds for iron and magnetite. The highest known oxidation state is reported to be plus 9 in the tetroxoridium X cation IRO plus 4. It is predicted that even a plus 1O oxidation state may be achievable by platinum in the tetroxoplatinum X cation PTO2 plus 4. The lowest oxidation state is minus 4, as for carbon in methane or for chromium in Cr CO 4 4 minus. The increase in oxidation state of an atom, through a chemical reaction, is known as an oxidation, a decrease in oxidation state is known as a reduction. Such reactions involve the formal transfer of electrons, a net gain in electrons being a reduction, and a net loss of electrons being an oxidation. For pure elements, the oxidation state is zero. The oxidation state of an atom does not represent the real charge on that atom, or any other actual atomic property. This is particularly true of high oxidation states, where the ionization energy required to produce a multiply positive ion is far greater than the energies available in chemical reactions. Additionally, oxidation states of atoms in a given compound may vary depending on the choice of electronegativity scale used in their calculation. Thus, the oxidation state of an atom in a compound is purely a formalism. It is nevertheless important in understanding the nomenclature conventions of inorganic compounds. Also, a number of observations pertaining to chemical reactions may be explained at a basic level in terms of oxidation states. In inorganic nomenclature, the oxidation state is represented by a Roman numeral placed after the element name inside a parenthesis or as a superscript after the element symbol. IUPAC definition of oxidation state Oxidation state A. Comprehensive definition of the term oxidation state IUPAC recommendations 2016 has been published with free access. It is a distillation of an IUPAC technical report. Toward a comprehensive definition of oxidation state. From 2014. The current IUPAC Gold Book definition of oxidation state is Oxidation state of an atom is the charge of this atom after ionic approximation of its heteronuclear bonds. And the term oxidation number is nearly synonymous. The underlying principle is that the ionic signs for two atoms that are bonded are deduced from the electron distribution in a LCAO MO model. In a bond between two different elements, the bond's electrons are assigned to its main atomic contributor. In a bond between two atoms of the same element, the electrons are divided equally. In practical use, the sign of the ionic approximation follows Allen electronegativities. Determination of oxidation state While introductory levels of chemistry teaching use postulated oxidation states, the IUPAC recommendation and the Gold Book entry list two entirely general algorithms for the calculation of the oxidation states of elements in chemical compounds. Simple approach without bonding considerations. Introductory chemistry uses postulates. The oxidation state for an element in a chemical formula is calculated from the overall charge and postulated oxidation states for all the other atoms. A simple example is based on two postulates OS equals plus 1 for hydrogen. OS equals minus 2 for oxygen where OS stands for oxidation state. 
This approach yields correct oxidation states in oxides and hydroxides of any single element, and in acids such as H2SO4 or hydrogen dichromate. Its coverage can be extended either by a list of exceptions or by assigning priority to the postulates. The latter works for H2O2 where the priority of rule 1 leaves both oxygens with oxidation state minus 1. Additional postulates and their ranking may expand the range of compounds to fit a textbook scope. As an example, one postulatory algorithm from many possible, in a sequence of decreasing priority, an element in a free form has OS equals zero. In a compound or ion, the oxidation state sum equals the total charge of the compound or ion. Fluorine in compounds has OS equals minus one, this extends to chlorine and bromine only when not bonded to a lighter halogen, oxygen or nitrogen. Group 1 and group 2 metals in compounds have OS equals plus 1 and plus 2, respectively. Hydrogen has OS equals plus 1, but adopts minus 1 when bonded as a hydride to metals or metalloids. Oxygen in compounds has OS equals minus 2. This set of postulates covers oxidation states of fluorides, chlorides, bromides, oxides, hydroxides and hydrides of any single element. It covers all oxoacids of any central atom and all their fluoro, chloro and bromo relatives, as well as salts of such acids with group 1 and 2 metals. It also covers iodides, sulfides and similar simple salts of these metals. Algorithm of assigning bonds This algorithm is performed on a Lewis structure a formula that shows all valence electrons. Oxidation state equals the charge of an atom after its heteronuclear bonds have been assigned to the more electronegative partner except when that partner is a reversibly bonded Lewis acid ligand and homonuclear bonds have been divided equally where is an electron pair, and OS is the oxidation state as a numerical variable. After the electrons have been assigned according to the vertical red lines on the formula, the total number of valence electrons that now belong to each atom are subtracted from the number n of valence electrons of the neutral atom such as 5 for nitrogen in group 15 to yield that atom's oxidation state. This example shows the importance of describing the bonding. Its summary formula, HNO3, corresponds to two structural isomers, the peroxynitrous acid in the above figure and the more stable nitric acid. With the formula HNO3, the simple approach without bonding considerations yields minus 2 for all three oxygens and plus 5 for nitrogen, which is correct for nitric acid. For the peroxynitrous acid, however, the two oxygens in the OO bond each have OS. Minus 1 and the nitrogen has OS. Plus 3, which requires a structure to understand. Organic compounds are treated in a similar manner, exemplified here on functional groups occurring in between CH4 and CO2. Analogously for transition metal compounds, CRO 2 on the left has a total of 36 valence electrons 18 pairs to be distributed, and CR 6 on the right has 66 valence electrons 33 pairs. A key step is drawing the Lewis structure of the molecule neutral, cationic, anionic. Atom symbols are arranged so that pairs of atoms can be joined by single two-electron bonds as in the molecule a sort of skeletal structure, and the remaining valence electrons are distributed such that sp atoms obtain an octet duet for hydrogen with priority that increases with electronegativity. In some cases, this leads to alternative formulae that differ in bond orders the full set of which is called the resonance formulas. Consider the sulfate anion SO2-4 with 32 valence electrons, 24 from oxygens, 6 from sulfur, 2 of the anion charge obtained from the implied cation. The bond orders to the terminal oxygens have no effect on the oxidation state so long as the oxygens have octets. Already the skeletal structure, top left, yields the correct oxidation states, as does the Lewis structure, top right one of the resonance formulas. The bond order formula at bottom is closest to the reality of four equivalent oxygens each having a total bond order of two. 
That total includes the bond of order one half to the implied cation and follows the eight minus n rule, requiring that the main group atoms bond order equals eight minus n valence electrons of the neutral atom, enforced with priority that increases with electronegativity. This algorithm works equally for molecular cations composed of several atoms. An example is the ammonium cation of eight valence electrons 5 from nitrogen, 4 from hydrogens, minus one electron for the cation's positive charge. Drawing Lewis structures with electron pairs as dashes emphasizes the essential equivalence of bond pairs and lone pairs when counting electrons and moving bonds onto atoms. Structures drawn with electron dot pairs are of course identical in every way. The algorithm's caveat The algorithm contains a caveat, which concerns rare cases of transition metal complexes with a type of ligand that is reversibly bonded as a Lewis acid as an acceptor of the electron pair from the transition metal, termed a Z-type ligand in Green's covalent bond classification method. The caveat originates from the simplifying use of electronegativity instead of the Mo-based electron allegiance to decide the ionic sign. One early example is the O2S-RHCl PPH3 2 complex with SO2 as the reversibly bonded acceptor ligand released upon heating. The RH-S bond is therefore extrapolated ionic against allen electronegativities of rhodium and sulfur, yielding oxidation state plus 1 for rhodium. Algorithm of summing bond orders This algorithm works on Lewis structures and on bond graphs of extended solids Oxidation state is obtained by summing the heteronuclear bond orders at the atom as positive if that atom is the electropositive partner in a particular bond and as negative if not, and the atom's formal charge if any, is added to that sum. Applied to a Lewis structure an example of a Lewis structure with no formal charge illustrates that, in this algorithm, homonuclear bonds are simply ignored notice the bond orders in blue. Carbon monoxide exemplifies a Lewis structure with formal charges To obtain the oxidation states, the formal charges are summed with the bond order value taken positively at the carbon and negatively at the oxygen. Applied to molecular ions, this algorithm considers the actual location of the formal ionic charge, as drawn in the Lewis structure. As an example, summing bond orders in the ammonium cation yields minus 4 at the nitrogen of formal charge plus 1, with the two numbers adding to the oxidation state of minus 3. Notice that the sum of oxidation states in the ion equals its charge as it equals 0 for a neutral molecule. Also in anions, the formal ionic charges have to be considered when non-zero. For sulfate this is exemplified with the skeletal or Lewis structures top, compared with the bond order formula of all oxygens equivalent and fulfilling the octet and 8-n rules bottom. Applied to bond graph a bond graph in solid-state chemistry is a chemical formula of an extended structure, in which direct bonding connectivities are shown. An example is the Auerb 3 perovskite, the unit cell of which is drawn on the left and the bond graph with added numerical values on the right. We see that the oxygen atom bonds to the six nearest rubidium cations, each of which has four bonds to the oride anion. The bond graph summarizes these connectivities. The bond orders also called bond valences sum up to oxidation states according to the attached sign of the bond's ionic approximation. There are no formal charges in bond graphs. Determination of oxidation states from a bond graph can be illustrated on ilmenite, iron 2 titanate. We may ask whether the mineral contains Fe2 plus and T4 plus, or Fe3 plus and T3 plus. Its crystal structure has each metal atom bonded to six oxygens and each of the equivalent oxygens to two irons and two titaniums, as in the bond graph below. Experimental data show that three metal oxygen bonds in the octahedron are short and three are long, the metals are off center. The bond orders valences, obtained from the bond lengths by the bond valence method, sum up to 2.01 at Fe and 3.99 at T, which can be rounded off to oxidation states plus 2 and plus 4, respectively. Nominal oxidation states 
A nominal oxidation state is a general term for two specific purpose-oriented values Electrochemical oxidation state, it represents a molecule or ion in the Latimer diagram or Frost diagram for its redox active element. An example is the Latimer diagram for sulfur at pH 0 where the electrochemical oxidation state plus 2 for sulfur puts HS2O-3 between S and H2SO3. Systematic oxidation state, it is chosen from close alternatives for pedagogical reasons of descriptive chemistry. An example is the oxidation state of phosphorus in H3PO3 which is in fact the diprotic HPO2 taken nominally as plus 3, while allen electronegativities of phosphorus and hydrogen suggest plus 5 by a narrow margin that makes the two alternatives almost equivalent. Both alternative oxidation states of phosphorus make chemical sense, depending on the chemical property or reaction we wish to emphasize. In contrast, their average plus 4 does not. Balancing redox Oxidation states can be useful for balancing chemical equations for oxidation reduction or redox reactions, because the changes in the oxidized atoms have to be balanced by the changes in the reduced atoms. For example, in the reaction of acetaldehyde with Tollens reagent to form acetic acid shown below, the carbonyl carbon atom changes its oxidation state from plus 1 to plus 3 loses two electrons. This oxidation is balanced by reducing two Ag plus cations to Ag0, gaining two electrons in total. An inorganic example is the Bettendorf reaction using tin 2 chloride to prove the presence of arsenite ions in a concentrated HCl extract. When arsenic is present, a brown coloration appears, forming a dark precipitate of arsenic. According to the following simplified reaction, 2 is 3 plus plus 3 SN 2 plus 2 is 0 plus 3 SN 4 plus here 3 tin atoms are oxidized from oxidation state plus 2 to plus 4, yielding 6 electrons that reduce 2 arsenic atoms from oxidation state plus 3 to 0. The simple one-line balancing goes as follows, the two redox couples are written down as they react is 3 plus plus SN2 plus is 0 plus SN4 plus, 1 tin is oxidized from oxidation state plus 2 to plus 4, a 2 electron step, hence 2 is written in front of the two arsenic partners. 1 arsenic is reduced from plus 3 to 0, a 3 electron step, hence 3 goes in front of the two tin partners. An alternative three-line procedure is to write separately the half reactions for oxidation and for reduction, each balanced with electrons, and then to sum them up such that the electrons cross out. In general, these redox balances the one-line balance or each half reaction need to be checked for the ionic and electron charge sums on both sides of the equation being indeed equal. If they are not equal, suitable ions are added to balance the charges and the non-redox elemental balance. Ambiguous oxidation states Lewis formulae are fine rule-based approximations of chemical reality, as indeed are Allen electronegativities. Still, oxidation states may seem ambiguous when their determination is not straightforward. Rule-based oxidation states feel ambiguous when only experiment can decide. There are also truly dichotomous values to be decided by mere convenience. Oxidation state determination from resonance formulas is not straightforward. Seemingly ambiguous oxidation states are obtained on a set of resonance formulas of equal weights for a molecule of heteronuclear bonds where the atom connectivity does not correspond to the number of two electron bonds dictated by the 8-n rule. An example is S2N2 where four resonance formulas featuring one S equals N double bond have oxidation states plus 2 and plus 4 on the two sulfur atoms, to be averaged to plus 3 because the two sulfur atoms are equivalent in this square-shaped molecule. A physical measurement is needed to decide the oxidation state. This happens when a non-innocent ligand is present, of hidden or unexpected redox properties that could otherwise be assigned to the central atom. An example is the nickel dithiolate complex, Ni S2C2H2 -2. When the redox ambiguity of a central atom and ligand yields dichotomous oxidation states of close stability, thermally induced tautomerism may result, as exemplified by manganese catecholate, Minnesota C6H4O2 -3. 
Assignment of such oxidation states in general requires spectroscopic, magnetic or structural data. When the bond order has to be ascertained along an isolated tandem of a heteronuclear and a homonuclear bond. An example is S2O2-3 with two oxidation state alternatives. Note bond orders in blue and formal charges in green. The SS distance in thiosulfate is needed to reveal that this bond order is very close to 1, as in the formula on the left. Truly ambiguous oxidation states occur. When the electronegativity difference between two bonded atoms is very small, as in H3PO3 above, two almost equivalent pairs of oxidation states, open for a choice, are obtained for these atoms. When an electronegative p block atom forms solely homonuclear bonds, the number of which differs from the number of two electron bonds suggested by rules. Examples are homonuclear finite chains like N-3 the central nitrogen connects two atoms while three two-electron bonds are required by 8-N rule or I-3 the central iodine connects two atoms while one two-electron bond fulfills the 8-N rule. A sensible approach is to distribute the ionic charge over the two outer atoms. Such a placement of charges in a polysulfide S2-N where all inner sulfurs form two bonds, fulfilling the 8-N rule follows already from its Lewis structure. When the isolated tandem of a heteronuclear and a homonuclear bond leads to a bonding compromise in between two Lewis structures of limiting bond orders. An example here is N2O, the typically used oxidation state of nitrogen in N2O is plus 1, which also obtains for both nitrogens by a molecular orbital approach. It is worth noting that the formal charges on the right comply with electronegativities, and this implies an added ionic bonding contribution. Indeed, the estimated N N and N O bond orders are 2.76 and 1.9, respectively, approaching the formula of integer bond orders that would include the ionic contribution explicitly as a bond in green. Conversely, formal charges against electronegativities in a Lewis structure decrease the bond order of the corresponding bond. An example is carbon monoxide with a bond order estimate of 2.6. Elements with multiple oxidation states. Most elements have more than one possible oxidation state. For example, carbon has nine possible integer oxidation states from minus 4 to plus 4. Fractional oxidation states Fractional oxidation states are often used to represent the average oxidation state of several atoms of the same element in a structure. For example, the formula of magnetite is, implying an average oxidation state for iron of plus eight-thirds. However, this average value may not be representative if the atoms are not equivalent. In a crystal below 120 K minus 153 degrees Celsius, two-thirds of the cations are Fe3 plus and one-third are Fe2 plus, and the formula may be more specifically represented as FeO iron 3 oxide. Likewise, propane, C3H8, has been described as having a carbon oxidation state of minus eight-thirds. Again, this is an average value since the structure of the molecule is H3C-CH2-CH3, with the first and third carbon atoms each having an oxidation state of minus 3 and the central one minus 2. An example with true fractional oxidation states for equivalent atoms is potassium superoxide, KO2. The diatomic superoxide ion O-2 has an overall charge of minus 1, so each of its two equivalent oxygen atoms is assigned an oxidation state of minus 1 half. This ion can be described as a resonance hybrid of two Lewis structures, where each oxygen has oxidation state 0 in one structure and minus 1 in the other. For the cyclopentadienyl anion C5H-5, the oxidation state of C is minus 1 plus minus 1 fifth equals minus 6 fifths. The minus 1 occurs because each carbon is bonded to one hydrogen atom a less electronegative element, and the minus 1 fifth because the total ionic charge of minus 1 is divided among five equivalent carbons. Again this can be described as a resonance hybrid of five equivalent structures, each having four carbons with oxidation state minus one and one with minus two. Use in nomenclature 
The oxidation state in compound naming is placed either as a right superscript to the element symbol in a chemical formula, such as Fe, or in parentheses after the name of the element in chemical names, such as iron 3. For example, iron 3 sulfate is named iron 3 sulfate and its formula can be shown as Fe 2 SO4 3. This is because a sulfate ion has a charge of minus 2, so each iron atom takes a charge of plus 3. Note that fractional oxidation numbers should not be used in naming. Minium, is represented as lead 2, IV oxide, showing the actual two oxidation states of the nonequivalent lead atoms. Oxidation state in metals Many compounds with luster and electrical conductivity maintain a simple stoichiometric formula, such as the golden TO, blue-black RuO2 or coppery RuO3, all of obvious oxidation state. Ultimately, however, the assignment of the free metallic electrons to one of the bonded atoms has its limits and leads to unusual oxidation states. Simple examples are the LiPb and Cu3O ordered alloys, the composition and structure of which are largely determined by atomic size and packing factors. Should oxidation state be needed for redox balancing, it is best set to zero for all atoms of such an alloy. History of the oxidation state concept Early days Oxidation itself was first studied by Antoine Lavoisier, who defined it as the result of reactions with oxygen hence the, name. the term has since been generalized to imply a formal loss of electrons. Oxidation states, called oxidation grades by Friedrich Wohler in 1835, were one of the intellectual stepping stones that Dmitri Mendeleev used to derive the periodic table. Jensen gives an overview of the history up to 1938. Use in nomenclature When it was realized that some metals form two different binary compounds with the same nonmetal, the two compounds were often distinguished by using the ending IC for the higher metal oxidation state and the ending OUS for the lower. For example, iron 3 chloride is ferric chloride and iron 2 chloride is ferrous chloride. This system is not very satisfactory although sometimes still used because different metals have different oxidation states which have to be learned. Ferric and ferrous are plus 3 and plus 2 respectively, but cupric and cuprous are plus 2 and plus 1, and stannic and stannous are plus 4 and plus 2. Also there was no allowance for metals with more than two oxidation states, such as vanadium with oxidation states plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 and plus 5. This system has been largely replaced by one suggested by Alfred Stock in 1919 and adopted by IUPAC in 1940. Thus, iron 2 chloride was written as iron 2 chloride rather than ferrous chloride. The Roman numeral 2 at the central atom came to be called the Stock number. Now an obsolete term, and its value was obtained as a charge at the central atom after removing its ligands along with the electron pairs they shared with it. Development towards the current concept The term, oxidation state, in English chemical literature was popularized by Wendell Mitchell Latimer in his 1938 book about electrochemical potentials. He used it for the value synonymous with the German term Wurdigkeit, previously termed valence, polar valence, or polar number in English, or oxidation stage, or indeed the state of oxidation. Since 1938, the term oxidation state has been connected with electrochemical potentials and electrons exchanged in redox couples participating in redox reactions. By 1948, IUPAC used the 1940 nomenclature rules with the term oxidation state instead of the original valency. In 1948 Linus Pauling proposed that oxidation number could be determined by extrapolating bonds to being completely ionic in the direction of electronegativity. A full acceptance of this suggestion was complicated by the fact that the Pauling electronegativities as such depend on the oxidation state and that they may lead to unusual values of oxidation states for some transition metals. In 1990 IUPAC resorted to a postulatory rule-based method to determine the oxidation state. This was complemented by the synonymous term oxidation number as a descendant of the stock number introduced in 1940 into the nomenclature. However, the terminology using ligands 
gave the impression that oxidation number might be something specific to coordination complexes. This situation and the lack of a real single definition generated numerous debates about the meaning of oxidation state, suggestions about methods to obtain it and definitions of it. To resolve the issue, an IUPAC project was started in 2008 on the "...comprehensive definition of oxidation state," and was concluded by two reports and by the revised entries, "...oxidation state," and oxidation number in the IUPAC Gold Book. The outcomes were a single definition of oxidation state and two algorithms to calculate it in molecular and extended solid compounds, guided by Allen electronegativities that are independent of oxidation state. See also List of oxidation states of the elements Electrochemistry References